Hey everybody, it's Corey from John Bear here in Hamilton. One of the best things about owning a GM vehicle over the past few years is that almost all of our vehicles come standard with Apple CarPlay. Now, if you're an iPhone user, last month brought a big update with iOS 13, and along with that, a brand new Apple CarPlay. So today in this video, we're gonna walk you through that new Apple CarPlay and show you what's changed. All right, so with anything, the Apple CarPlay has to have your phone plugged into the car. Now with this new version, you need the newest version of iOS, so make sure your phone has been updated to that new version that came out in September. And that will bring you the Apple CarPlay update as well, because it's all bundled in together. So again, plug your phone into your car, and this green icon should light up and say that signifying that Apple CarPlay is available. So we'll go ahead and tap on that. So this is the biggest thing you'll see right from the start is our new home screen. It's got a couple widgets on the front. Now keep in mind this button here too has changed. So you can actually tap that to access the old app row uh, if you need to access any apps that aren't visible on your recent app section. But if we tap this again, we'll go over this first screen. So this is the biggest change and it's the home screen that kind of outlines your, your everyday use um, apps that you use for our CarPlay. So you have your navigation, you have your quick links here up top that will change depending on what you're doing. You have your music in this section here. And then this is brand new as a calendar section that we'll get into a little bit later. So starting with navigation, this will always show Apple Maps. That is obviously their proprietary mapping program, but you do have access to your third party navigation as well, like Waze and Google Maps. And a nice new feature now is Siri will actually activate those um, as opposed to only being able to give you navigation through Apple Maps. So if you want to navigate, say, to uh, 1200 Upper James, you can press and hold the Siri button either on your wheel or down in the corner, and uh, you can ask Google Maps to navigate you to that location um, instead of Apple Maps. So specifying it like this, navigate with Google Maps to 1200 Upper James Street. So now it's going to update with Google Maps instead of your regular Apple Maps, and then you can hit go and navigate accordingly. So that's a nice feature that they've incorporated finally, because a lot of people don't actually use Apple Maps. They prefer, you know, their Waze or their Google Maps or navigation. So going back to the home screen, our navigation is in this section here. You can actually tap right on that to open up Apple Maps. Um, we can, you know, take a look at our, our close, our favorites, our what's close by. Uh, we can hit destinations and we can look at our recent uh, search for destinations. Say we want to go to Tim Hortons, it'll bring up their information. Uh, it'll give us a Yelp rating as well, the address. You can call the location directly if you need to call ahead. And then you can hit go and it'll actually nav obviously navigate you to where you need to go. A couple of little options here too, if you pull up this. So obviously we can search, we can unmute the voice turn by turn, which I personally keep muted. This is a nice thing too, we can share an ETA. So we can actually hit uh, one of our contacts, they'll pull up recent contacts, and it'll share our estimated time arrival um, with the, the location that's mapped in right now. So that's a cool new feature that they've updated. So if we actually just go back, one more thing too is uh, you can search for uh, locations on the way, say we do need to get gas on the way, we can you know hit gas stations, it'll show us the closest one and how much time it'll add to our, our navigation. So say we wanna to go to this Husky, it'll add two minutes and uh, we can hit go and it'll adjust our navigation so that it adds that Husky into it and uh, we hit it on the way. So that's actually a really cool feature too. So we'll go back home. So that's navigation in a nutshell. Now you'll see our home widget will actually change, shows our navigation and it shows our turn by turn in the corner. Another nice incorporation uh, that I mentioned before is this new calendar section. So with calendars, uh, it'll show your, your next upcoming, uh, upcoming event. If you press on that there, you know, it says, okay, there's uh, an Instagram, my event is an Instagram post that's set at 3 p.m. So it's reminding me of that. Um, and then we can go back and see what else is in the day. Um, and it also, which is a nice feature, is if there's any location attached to that. So say you have a calendar appointment at a restaurant and you have the address for the restaurant in, there'll actually be a section um, under there that'll say navigate to this address and it'll allow you to quickly navigate to it there. 
So going on to the next section here is our music section. So what this will do is actually give us a widget for our last played music app. So this doesn't just apply to Apple Music. Say we do play from Spotify. Um, we're playing something here, so we'll just quickly play something. And pause that there. Uh, if we go back, we go to our now playing. So now it's actually switched over to Spotify. So if I you know, tap on this, it'll open up Spotify as the app that was last playing. But we're going to use Apple Music and take a look at some updates they've done to that. So we'll go to our uh, Apple Music. There it is. So in Apple Music, we have a little bit of a creative changes. Album artwork has more of a prominent view now, which is nice. Uh, you'll see it on the side. Before, it used to be just faded in the background. It still has it, but now we have a nice picture on the side. Uh, we have a couple options in our our music so we can add to library this was all there before it's just a different layout and then we can have it suggest uh, songs like this or we don't want to suggest like this uh, what that'll do is create a station depending on what song you're on it'll add more songs like that that maybe you might be interested in listening to you have to have apple music for that of course and then we have our shuffle and our, our repeats down here. If we go back, this is our home screen. So this is our library window and it just shows our recently added. You see the album artwork. You can tap on, you know, any one of those to start the song. And then um, we can go back. So there's a couple sections up top here for you. Gives you suggestions if you have Apple Music. Uh, some mixes, uh, so you know, if you like the Chainsmokers, it'll give us a list of other music that is uh, similar to it. And then you can discover new artists or things that you haven't actually listened to before. You can browse um, what's you know new music that's out. It'll give you a kind of curated playlist uh, if you're looking for something different to listen to. And then obviously Apple Music has their you know Beats One radio stations and uh, other stations for different genres. So that is the new Apple Music. Um, it's actually it's far more intuitive. I do like the way they've set it up. It's a little bit easier now to navigate. And it gives you more suggestions. If you know, if you do pay for the monthly subscription, uh, it does suggest music that you may not have listened to. So I've actually found some music that I've liked um, just from having it tell me what it thinks I might like next. So we're going to go ahead and hit the home button here and switch back. And we're going to look at one more thing. So one more here is our settings. And a couple settings have changed with the new Apple CarPlay. Um, Do Not Disturb is still available if you're not familiar what that is. If you turn that feature on, when you plug in your CarPlay, anyone that uh, is on your favorites list, if they send you a message, they'll get an automatic text reply stating that you're driving and that you'll contact them later. So I keep that off, but that is if something, if you wanna Do Not Disturb, that's how you set that up there. The appearance section is new now. So right now we have the, the new dark theme that's always on. That's my personal preference, but if we want, we can switch to automatic. It'll bring us this new white theme, and what that does is comes on during the day, and uh, at night, it'll automatically switch to the dark theme. Now, I personally, uh, I like the dark theme better, so I keep that always dark, but if you want to switch, uh, you can do that there. You can turn on the Siri suggestions in the dashboard, so that's that little widget back here uh, that will appear right in here when you don't have navigation. Uh, that is how you turn that on and off. And then if you are conscious about your, your data on your phone, you can turn off the album artwork. Um, album artwork, obviously, it's their, their pictures. It's downloading using your, your phone's internet. So if you are on a small data plan, you can turn that off and save a little bit. From my experience, it doesn't use that much. Most people are on a data plan that can handle it now anyways. But if you can't, that's where you turn it off. So yeah, that's the biggest thing about the new Apple CarPlay. This new home screen is probably the best change they've made. It's a lot more intuitive. They've obviously not had an update for Apple CarPlay for some time, so this is definitely a welcome change. So that's it for the new Apple CarPlay. It's been a long awaited update and we're glad it's here. It just makes our cars that much better. And of course, if you feel I've missed anything or have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.